All right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to our remote lectures. So uh, the first thing I want to note is is that uh, I do actually have a blackboard. Uh, I bought this blackboard uh, from Middlebury Surplus right around uh, when I left Middlebury College and I brought it with me. And I had this local woodworker by the name of Bill Johnson build this frame out of maple. So fortunately, we'll be able to continue our chalk talk model of lectures. So I really would like to emphasize that despite this being recorded and you having access to this later, I highly encourage you to write down anything that I write. And again, much as you know, you all know that I'm a big fan of uh, field notes right here. Oh, gotta watch the zoom there. Uh, their slogan is, I'm writing this down not to remember it later, but I'm writing this down to remember it now. So in order to facilitate uh, you know, retention and memory, uh, I think it's a good idea to follow along and write what I'm writing. And oh yes, I can remove this post-it, which I use to set the zoom. Okay, so these are the files that you're going to have to have ready for uh, today's Chalk Talk on Lasso. So if you go to the Mass Mutual RStudio project, you should have uh, three files. One of them is regression.rmd, the next is cart.rmd, and the final one is lasso.rmd. We're going to start by doing a refresher on uh, the first two RMD files, which are shiny apps, on linear regression and uh, CART, or classification and regression trees. So why don't we get started right now? So this is our lecture on LASSO. Now, I do not remember what LASSO stands for. You can look it up on the internet. But let's do a little recap. Recap of regression. So if you look in the RMD, uh, regression.rmd file, which we will in a minute, uh, I just want to give an executive summary of what it is that those files, that, that file covers. In particular, they talk about three models for y equals credit card debt. Okay, this was a uh, simulated data set from the uh, ISLR textbook. The outcome variable is credit card debt. So there are three models that they consider uh, that we consider in that RMD file. One is what I called the naive model. The naive model is as follows. It's simply your prediction y hat is just equal to y bar or the mean of the observations. So notice here, you're not actually using any of the predictor variables. You're just saying, oh, for example, if we know nothing about the people in this data set, uh, or, or, or if, say we have an individual from this population and we know nothing about them, what is a reasonable guess about uh, their credit card debt? Well, it is just the average of everybody in that population. The next model is a simple linear regression model where y hat is equal to now an intercept plus beta 1 hat. Note we're putting hats on top of the values of the intercept and the slope because they're fitted times income of the individual. So now we're saying, OK, can we do better than just using the average of everybody in the population can we incorporate information uh, about their income in order to get better predictions? So this is a simple linear regression model because there's only one predictor variable. And the third model that they consider here 
is multiple regression. Where now, we're not just going to use one predictive variable, we're going to use two predictive variables. What are they? Well, again, y hat is equal to an intercept plus beta 1 hat times income plus, what is it? Uh, beta 2 hat, which is limit. So now we're incorporating more than one variable, two variables. We're incorporating the individual's uh, credit limit as well. Okay, so uh, now that we've written this out, why don't we jump in to the, uh, we'll do a little screencast of the contents of regression.rnd. So we jump over here and let's now knit the file. And let's open it in the browser for a better view. All right, it's going to take a second here. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at our naive model. The naive model is, and everybody remember this number, that the average of all the Ys, the Y bar, is $520 and one cent. So we can mark this value of y bar, which we're going to use as our naive model, with a red line in the histogram of the values. So this red line is 520, and it is the average of this sort of right skewed set of credit card debt, uh, credit card balance, which is basically debt. So that's our naive model. Let's now take a look at our simple linear regression model where we're now going to incorporate information about income. If we scroll down, okay, we have a fitted intercept of 246 and a slope for income of 6.048. So what does this look like when we visualize it? Okay, so now, recall, we have the naive model in red, which was $520.01. But the blue line represents the simple linear regression line where we now take into account income. Notice how it sort of dances around that red line. So it's saying, oh, okay, for those individuals with lower incomes, they fall below average, and for individuals with higher income, they fall above average. And the intuition makes sense because I would say that individuals who make more income probably have higher credit card debt. Last but not least, let's take a look at the multiple regression model where we now incorporate three variables. We have income and credit limit. So now, how do we represent uh, this uh, sort of regression model uh, visually? Well, we need to use three dimensions. In other words, a regression plane. So that's what's going on over here. We have income on the x-axis here. We have x2 limit on the, again, now in a 3D plot, y here. And then we have the outcome variable along the z-axis. All right, so why don't we play around with that? Now we have a regression plane. Last but not least, let's compare all three models. So there's definitely a lot going on here. So why don't I just scroll down here. The plane here in turquoise or teal, that represents the naive model. So that irrespective of what value of x1 and income and x2 limit you have, you're just going to guess $520. There you see it. $520.01. Next, in red, the red uh, plane corresponds to the simple linear regression model, where we don't care about an individual's credit limit. The, only, the plane only changes for different values of 
income. So this thing right here is a flat plane, well not a flat plane, but a plane whose values only change along this axis. And then last but not least, we have the regression plane for our multiple regression model. That is now the value on the Z, which is, remember, credit card balance, now changes as a function of both limit and income. And notice how in both cases, the simple linear regression model in red, as well as the uh, multiple regression model along using this color palette, all sort of dance around the naive model. Let's come back to the blackboard. So remember folks, I want you to remember that value in particular. $520 and one cent. Okay, now let's do a recap of CART or classification and regression trees. So uh, I think I can fit this in over here. Why don't I just draw a little line? Recap of CART. So recall that for a classification tree, which is when you have a Y numerical, I'm sorry, a Y categorical outcome variable, or a regression tree when you have a Y numerical variable. That's why uh, these kinds of trees can do both. But in particular, I want you to remember complexity parameter alpha. Remember that the shape of the tree uh, depended entirely on the value of alpha. And when we coded this in R, uh, I believe the value was CP. So remember, CP is R code, whereas alpha is just generic notation. So let's now go back to the cart.rmd shiny app and have a little recap of uh, what CART does. So let's open up CART and run this document. And let's open that up in a browser window. Okay, so the key message I want you to retain, or uh, the key recap message I want you to remember, is the following. That remember that depending on how we set the alpha, uh, the alpha complexity parameter, aka the tuning parameter, we can get wildly different shaped trees. So for example, if we set alpha to 0.1, this is the resulting tree. But if we lower alpha or lower the complexity parameter, we get a much more complex tree. And also, if we set alpha to be very high, oh, we get the least complex or the most simplest possible tree, which is simply a stump. And also, I would like to draw your attention to this formula here. Now, while this does look daunting, there are two components that uh, interplay with each other in determining what a tree should look like. You want to balance between the residual sum of squares, or how well your predictions y hat match the observed y. You want to balance that against the complexity of the tree. And remember that the complexity of the tree is set by uh, the cardinality of t. In other words, the number of leaves. So if we go back over here, over here we have a tree with one, two, three leaves, so the bar t would be equal to three. And setting alpha is what allows you to balance between those two choices. Let's go back to the board. So remember folks that alpha, you have a balance. 
that for low values, what do we have? We have complex trees. For low values of the complexity parameter alpha, we tended to get trees that got very, very deep. But on the other hand, for high values, we got very simple trees. In fact, when we really dialed up the value of lambda, we got the most simple tree possible, which was simply a root. So, now let's talk about lasso. Lasso combines these two ideas. At the root of lasso is multiple regression, but it allows you a tool or a dial or a setting or a slider that you can play around with that allows you to choose between low complexity, I'm sorry, uh, low complexity models and high complexity models. Because recall, folks, that if you have an overly complex model, you might have, uh, you are at risk of overfitting to the training data. That was for uh, models that are overly complex. But if you have a model that might be too simple for your given data, you might have models that are underfit. 